What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Evie E, and this is The Ebb Effect. So today we've got a bit of a luxurious video. That is right, a luxury collective haul. Now, my channel is not necessarily a luxury channel. However, I luxuriate in luxurious things, so I figured why not come and share them with you. First, I wanna say if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back and clicking on another video. If you're new and you've stumbled upon my page, I hope that you'll take the time to check me out and then consider hitting the subscribe button as well. While you're at it, go ahead and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any new uploads. All right, guys, so on the topic of luxury, this is now, I think, a touchy slash sensitive topic. It seems to have turned into a bit of a taboo conversation, especially when it comes to women in luxury. Um, but more specifically, black women in luxury. Now, I'm not really sure when it shifted into that arena, but there's nothing wrong with women enjoying luxury. Actually, there's nothing wrong with anybody enjoying luxury. Do what makes you happy. As long as you are prioritizing and making sure that your responsibilities are taken care of, do you. And if buying luxury things here and there make you happy, then by all means, do that. Life is short. Stop waiting till the perfect time to get this or to get that or to splurge for whatever it is that you want. If you can get it now, do that. So as I mentioned, this is a collective haul, so that means I did not purchase all these items at the same time. Um, I've collected these over the last few months, so I just decided to pull them all together and share them with you um, in one video. So, I guess we can get right into it. Okay, so first up we have Emilio Pucci. And I think the camera is washing it out. But this is a really cute envelope type packaging with the ribbon on the back. So I got this from Farfetch and I just so happened to be on Farfetch when they were running a sale. And so I came across this and I said, I want it. So in this packaging came a scarf. And the scarf looks like this. How gorgeous is this? So what really caught my eye about this scarf was the coloring and the colors on this scarf really pop out and so i could not stop looking at it so i did pass it up i looked at i clicked on it i looked at it i inspected it and then i clicked out of it and then i kept scrolling but i couldn't stop thinking about it so i went back to it and decided to add to cart and then i paid for it um so not only were the colors really beautiful to me but the pricing on it was really nice too so I think the normal, and it doesn't have the price on here, but I believe the normal retail price for this scarf is anywhere from 350 to 390, 395, something like that. I got this for 185, 190. So almost $200 off. So you cannot beat that. Um, so like I said, I got this off of Farfetch and Farfetch is like a hub for various designer boutiques around the world and so this came from a boutique i believe it's in paris and it's called browns so yeah i ordered this and i got it within i think three days shipping was extremely fast it was extremely fast and the reason why i even picked this up to begin with was because i was preparing for a trip to mexico which i unfortunately did not make, but that is a story for a different day. So I did make that trip, but I will save this scarf and use it for something else in the future. This scarf actually is big enough to use it multiple different ways. You can, you can use it as a bandeau. You can use it as a headscarf. You can even use this as a sarong. I might be pushing it though, because my onion is onioning. And yeah, I don't think she's gonna let me be great. But you can use this in multiple different ways. Love the color blocking of this scarf and the material on this scarf is super, super soft and luxurious. I think this was a great buy. 
All right, so next I picked up some Fendi shades and I've kind of been eyeing these shades for a while now. And let me put them on for you. Look at that. I love the sizing of the frames around my face. This is kind of a cat eye slash square look. It's, I like it. I love the way it frames my face. Um, I will say that I was a little bit nervous about the logo branding on these. Let's see, right there. So I don't know if you could pick it up in the camera, but it also has the FF logo branded throughout the frame. And I was a little bit nervous that it would come off as being overly flashy. Now don't get me wrong, I love a good logo. Uh, I can be a bit of a logo ho, but for the most part, I really like understated items as well. That's kind of been my vibe here lately. So when I have them on, you can't really tell from afar that these are branded with the FFs unless you just walk up on my frames like that. So I got these for $260, something like that. These originally retail for $300 something. Um, I don't know, but I got these on sale as well. So with me and Shades, I have owned four different pair of Tom Ford shades in the past and I have broken every last one of those, okay? So for a very long time, I stopped wearing designer shades because I'm prone to breaking them, but I'm kind of tired of wearing my beauty supply store shades, um, just being 100% honest. I rock those shades and I rock it like they cost $500. But I think it's okay to have, you know, a nice, at least one nice pair of shades in your collection. So I decided that let me go ahead and re-up with a nice quality pair of shades. And so, yeah, we'll see how long these last. Hopefully I can do better with these than I have done with my other high-end shades in the past. All right, so for my next piece, it's actually one that I am wearing today, and that is my David Yurman cable bracelet. And I will come up close so you can see. So I finally ended up getting myself a bracelet for Christmas this past Christmas, and I actually wanted to build my stack so I have this in the five millimeter size. My original bracelet, which is the clasp bracelet, this is in the four mm. And so I decided to go up one. So I decided to go up one size for uh, this second one. I absolutely love it. So my wrists are extremely small and the way the sizing works, I believe they have extra small, small, medium, and large on the the expansion of the bracelet. So I have a size small. I believe this is a small. And the reason why I got a small versus an extra small is because I wanna be able to have room to kind of move it out the way when I wanna take it off my wrist. But for the most part, I don't take these off. I shower with it, I sleep with it, I everything with it, um, especially the class bracelet. But with this one, I may or may not take it off. It just depends on if I'm doing something that this may get caught on. But yeah, so I really love this stack. I may get one more to complete the stack. I don't know, but for now, I do love both of these. And I love my costume jewelry pieces, don't get me wrong. However, I do realize that costume jewelry is not real jewelry. And I really do wanna focus on building a uh, fine jewelry collection. And so I feel like David Yurman is a reasonable, more reasonable way to go. So yeah, I decided to pick up another bracelet and I absolutely love it. All right, so speaking of jewelry, I did pick up a little something something from Miss Chanelli. <laughs> up a pair of earrings. Y'all, and I know once you've seen one pair of CC earrings, you feel like you've seen them all. Um, what I love about the Chanel CC Classic earrings is that they come out with different variations of the classic CC style every season. 
So there are so many different variations. Now I do own a smaller gold pair and unfortunately in one of the earrings, a stone did pop out. And also unfortunately, Chanel does not repair that after a year. So yes, I still rock them with the missing jewel. I don't care, I don't care, I don't care. They're my earrings, I paid for them. I'm gonna rock them. When I saw these, it looks like the stones in these are somehow more ingrained in the metal. So I feel like these stones would be more secure than the ones from my gold pair. So that's why I picked these up. But honestly, I doubt that I buy another pair of just the CC earring like this. Any other Chanel earrings that I purchase in the future will have to be unique in more different because like I stated earlier, I really do wanna focus on building a fine jewelry collection. Not that I want a huge collection, but I just want, you know, some staple pieces and I would rather spend that money on fine jewelry versus more costume jewelry that's possibly break and I can't get it repaired if it's outside of the window. Okay, so next up, I picked up a little something something from Gucci and you can, probably see the bag back there. But, so I have a video where I talked about the shoes that I have picked up this year so far. And of my sneaker collection, all my sneakers are athletic slash streetwear. I don't have any, or I don't own any designer sneakers. And really the ones that I've been eyeing for quite a few years were from Gucci. And for whatever reason, every time that I thought I was gonna buy a pair, I've stalled. And I think it's a mix of everybody having the same pair of sneakers. And the sneakers that I'm talking about are the Ace sneakers, the standard white Ace sneakers with the iconic green and red striping on the sides of them. So everybody has those sneakers. And I also do know that there's different variations of that same sneaker as well. So they've got the ones with the heart, they've got the ones with the arrow, they've also got the ones I think it has a B on it. So I think it's a mix of everybody having the sneaker and then me not really knowing which variation of that I wanted. So I've just been stalling and I've been stalling for a long time. So I went back and I saw these and these caught my eye. So I decided to go ahead and pick them up because like I said, I've been wanting a pair of Gucci sneakers for a minute. So let me show you the box. Beautiful box looks like this. So then we unbox and it comes with two booklets and then an extra pair of laces. Love that for me. Okay. Then they come with two dust bags, which I love shoes or designer shoes that come with their own dust bags. These are so beautiful. So the sneakers that I picked up are the Cream GG Embossed Aces. Y'all, these are so beautiful. So from afar, they look like some regular cream sneakers, but up close, you can see that beautiful GG print. Okay, so there's still branding on the shoe, but it's a little bit more low key. And then these have, and this has the Gucci writing in gold on the back. <sighs> I saw these and I was like, let me try those on because I absolutely love the way these look. These look way better on the foot than they do just in my hand. But overall, this is a beautiful shoe. Like I said earlier, I've started leaning more towards understated things. And I like that there is still branding on it, but you can't really see it unless you are unless you come up on the shoe. So I like that touch about that. And what I love even more is that this is an all leather shoe. So you can just easily wipe any scuffs or stains off of the shoe. It's so much easier to maintain versus a leather and cloth shoe. I'm excited to get some wear out of these. I have not been able to wear them yet. Hopefully I can get a wear uh, this summer. If not, these I feel like are year round. You can wear these in the winter time too. You can wear what you want when you want to wear it really. But yeah, 
Gucci A sneakers, gorgeous pair of sneakers. And the other A sneakers that I was just talking about, I really do like those. And I think I'm still gonna get those sometime in the future. I just need to settle on which variation of that shoe that I want. So with this shoe, I will mention that this shoe runs extremely big, okay? So I wear a women's 10, which is a men's eight and a half. So let me also say this. I believe this shoe came out in men's sizing only. They now have this in women's sizing as well. The shoe looks the exact same, but now they have women and men's sizing. So I wear a 10 in women and eight and a half in men. So I tried these on in a 10, extremely big. So wanted to size down to a nine, but they didn't have the women's nine. So this is a men's seven and a half, which is the equivalent to a nine. And if I'm being quite honest, I still have some room in here. So I probably could have sized down again, a half size. So if you are looking at any of the Ace sneakers, I would just be advised that these do run big. So if you can try to try them on in store versus kind of blindly buying them off of the website because they do run big and you may need to size down a full size or a full size and a half. Okay, so next up we have Bottega Veneta. And by the dust bag, you can tell that this is a bag. So quick little story behind this. Um, I have a really close friend from college, undergrad, and she started a foundation called the Ruby Ball Foundation. Um, and it's centered around spreading awareness about sickle cell disease. And this stems from her own personal struggles and experiences with the disease. So she had a great opportunity to collaborate and partner with one of the local Bottega Veneta boutiques here in the Galleria um, for an event. And this event was a fundraiser for the foundation so that uh, with the purchases made during that event, a percentage of those proceeds would go towards the foundation. So with that being said, this bag is not a bag that I intentionally was looking for. Um, this was mainly to support the organization and provide um, just my donation to the organization. So when I saw this bag though, what drew me to it was the color. Look at that y'all. The color of this bag is so beautiful. Now this is called the double knot bag and this doesn't get a lot of love or a lot of limelight in social media because everybody's coveting the Jody. And the Jody, if you're not aware, it looks very similar to this except it's the strap with just one knot. So all of this is strap versus this bag which has two knots. And I don't believe this bag has an official name like the Jody. I think it's just called the double knot bag. So absolutely love this color. And the leather on this is so soft and so supple. When I say quality is top tier, it's top tier. This is top tier quality. So super soft, so super luxurious. So like I said, this bag is not a bag that I intentionally went looking for, but I did see it and I liked it enough to go ahead and make the purchase. However, I have not been able to wear her yet and I'm hoping that I can get some wear out of her soon. I am giving myself a timeline though because I don't wanna hold on to things that I don't just absolutely love, especially when it comes to pricier bags. So if I don't get any wear from this bag by the end of the year, maybe early 2022, I will consider selling it only because I just don't want this sitting without getting any wear. I understand, you know, seasonal changes. However, I've had this for a good amount of summer and I haven't been able to wear her. So we'll see what the fall gives and hopefully I can pull her out for some part of my wardrobe. Not saying that my wardrobe is just vast and that great, but I really would like to wear her. And if I don't, um, there's no use in me holding on for that long um, if I don't get anywhere, so. Okay, so next up I picked up something from YSL. And she is 
this beautiful raffia clutch or evening bag. Now this is strictly a summer bag uh, because of the material. I'm gonna come close so you can see. Because of the material, this is strictly a summer bag. I would not be rocking this in the fall or winter, but again, do you. If that's what you want to do, you set the tone for your own style, do you? But for me, this is more of a summer type bag. And I love the color of this gold hardware on this bag, which is what really caught my eye. Um, the contrast against the raffia is really, really nice. So this is great for an evening summer night. Um, like I just had it, you can also stuff the chain back in there and just hold it as a clutch bag. Ooh, come on girl, snap. Hold it as a clutch bag, you know, for like your all white parties. This is such, I feel like an essential piece for summer. So I decided to pick it up. Now, let me also say that with this material, it is very unforgiving. So you can't stuff this bag because it's not going to close at all. And you can't force it to close. Um, it really just holds your essentials. So I would say maybe a couple lip glosses. I don't even know if you can get a whole card holder in here, maybe just a few cards and then your keys. Um, yeah, I wouldn't stuff this too much cause it's not gonna close for you. Uh, it's gonna say, no, we won't go. So try not to overstuff this. Um, well, you can't overstuff it cause it won't close. So that's just one thing about this material to consider before you look into purchasing a raffia bag. It's not as forgiving as leather is. Okay, I've got one more thing to show you and it's another bag from Louis Vuitton. This is the new favorite in the Empreinte leather. Now, this came out two or three months ago. I don't know, I wasn't necessarily looking for this bag specifically, I was just looking for a new everyday bag. Um, so the old favorite got discontinued, I believe maybe last year or the year before. And so they came out with the new version of the favorite. And I'll pop up a picture so you can see what the favorite looks like or what the favorite used to look like. Um, so yeah, so the old favorite, which was coated canvas has been replaced with a leather line and this is called the new favorite and so in this line they have this in the all black on prompt leather like i said and then they also have this in black but the lettering is in cream and then they also have this in a lighter color which i think it's called dove so the bag is in that dove color and the lettering is also in cream. So I decided to go for the all black because again, I am gravitating more towards understated pieces. Of course, you can see the branding on here, but from afar, you can't really necessarily make out that it's LV unless you come closer to the bag. So yeah, love this as an everyday bag. And for me, this is the perfect size. Now, I am that girl who likes a big bag. I usually carry a bigger medium to large bag, but I overstuff that bag. I carry everything plus the kitchen sink. And I really want to get out of that, which I've done a pretty good job with that. Um, so now I really like medium to smaller bags. Can't really do many, um, but I like medium to smaller bags because it allows me to hold all of my essentials and maybe just a little bit more, okay? Because I always gotta have just a little bit more. So, details of this bag. Uh, grained, emprunt leather, very durable. Um, this is nothing like lambskin leather where you have to baby the bag. I don't, I haven't babied this bag. Like, I've kind of knocked it around here and there, and it still looks like it's brand spanking new. So, the clasp is magnetic. And it does a pretty good job with catching. See right there, it kind of went off the grid, but it does a pretty good job of catching. And then we have the straps. What I also love about this bag is that both straps are detachable. So you can detach this leather strap and just rock it with the chain, or you can take off the chain and rock it with the leather strap, or you can take them both off and rock it as a baguette. 
with the chain. Now this chain is slightly bigger than that of the original favorite. And what I also really appreciate about this chain is that it doesn't feel cheap. So it's not like that hollow type chain. It's a substantial chain. So it's got some weight on it. So it makes it feel like it's more of a luxurious chain. So I do like that. Um, overall, I really like the bag. And like I mentioned, this is for me a perfect size bag for everyday use, which I desperately needed in everyday, a new everyday bag. So I guess I can go ahead and show you the inside of it or what I have on the inside of it. So let me show you the inside of the flap. Okay. So the inside lining is, I think this is like microfiber, not really sure, but it's really soft. You can't really see cause I've got it stuffed, but I'll show you once I take the items out. So while we're at it, let me go ahead and show you what all fits in here. All right, so I've got my hand wipes. I've got two masks. I've got card holder, AirPods, I've got lip gloss, lip gloss, lip gloss. Girl, how many lip glosses do you need? You only got one pair of lips. Y'all, this Laneige, fire, fire. And then I have Rihanna Fussy. Is this Fussy? Yeah, Fussy. This is probably my favorite from Rihanna, but three lip glosses. Girl, you're getting off task. And then I have my hand sanitizer. And then I have a comb, cause your girl's gotta comb her weave every now and then. And then I have an eyelash brush. Okay, so this is the inside of the bag, okay? And then it has this open pocket, like so. So I am going to get back in here and see if I can fit my phone as well, which I'm pretty certain that I can. Card holder, lip gloss, lip gloss, lip gloss, spoolie. Oh, let me put a pin in here. Every woman should have a pin in their purse. That's what my mom used to say. But we should have a pin in the purse because there's too many times where I need a pin and I don't have it, but you got a whole bag and no pin. But that's a, another conversation for a different day too. Okay, so I have the items back in here. Input my phone. Hold up. Okay, so my phone fits very comfortable in there. My case, my shades case in here as well. <laughs> okay, so the case is in there. Let me see if it'll close. No, no, nah, boo, that's a stretch. I'm doing too much. Okay, so let me take it out of the case and see if I can fit. So out of the case. Oh yeah. Yeah, and I still have a little bit more room in there. Just a little bit more room. So this definitely holds a nice size amount of things. So absolutely love it. This also adjusts to only one length as a crossbody, so you take the snaps off on the side and then you secure them here up top like so so i am not a huge uh, louis vuitton fan i know don't throw stones at me i'm not a huge louis vuitton fan i do own just a couple of other bags i've actually gotten rid of a couple bags as well. I don't know what it is about Louis, but I'm not a huge fan, but I do like some of their pieces. I really do like this bag. So I'm glad I did pick her up and I feel like this is going to last me a pretty, a pretty good while. And I love the fact that the leather is so durable so I can get some good wear and tear out of her without making her look run down and raggedy. All right guys, so that's the end of my collective luxury haul. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give me a thumbs up also, let me know if there's something that you've picked up that you fancy. Let me know. I want to know what good things you brought into your life as well. Remember, things are to be used. People are to be experienced and enjoyed. Until the next time.